Hello and today we have another gas mask video but hopefully this will be a gas mask video or respirator video that people find interesting even if they're not really all that into respirators. So what this video is going to be is from the 1940s to the modern era. Uh, by decade I'm going to look at my favourite respirators. Now I may only go up to the year 2000 on this because I don't really have a mask that's newer than 2010 as far as I'm aware that's a particularly interesting or good design. So. And bear in mind of this video as well, that because we're going to look at the year some of these masks first came out or for, first went into production, we're not going to actually be saying, you know, cause some of these masks I have with a completely different year on them, but it's when they went into production that's important. Because obviously, like with lots of these things, if a mask design's good and it's kept in service for a long time, you're probably going to have one that's dated later than the initial production date. So we're just going to do it by 10 year decades. So with some of these as well, it might end up being that me, like they were right at the end of a certain decade. Uh, so you could argue that that's not a really good mask for a decade, but I'm just going to do it by decade. I'm not going to be too serious on it. But what the video should hopefully illustrate to you is how when you go on through the decades, you can see some really good improvements in mask designs that get better and better as time goes on until you get stuff that's really, really good. So let's look at the first mask then and get on with it. Okay, so for the 1940s, I have the Light Anti-Gas Respirator Mark II. So the Light Anti-Gas Respirator preceded this in Britain, uh, but the LEG Mark II is the more interesting mask, simply because when I get it out of its box, I've got the Canadian filter in there with it, so I can actually demonstrate it with a filter. Um, the Light Anti-Gas Respirator Mark II, what was great about this is it has a voice diaphragm on it. The voice diaphragm, I think, is actually, yeah, that bit there, the exhale valve is a bit around the outside of it. So, again, there are some things that aren't great of this mask. Its straps aren't very good, but that's standard for lots of World War II masks. Lots of World War II masks had these kind of really annoying to adjust elasticated straps. So that's the gas mask. Uh, so light anti-gas respirator Mark II. So what makes this mask so good is that for a World War II mask, it has a voice diaphragm on that's very clear and good to understand. Um, has an exhale valve, is fairly lightweight for a World War II mask, I haven't weighed it, but again, the filter weighs more than the mask, I think, with this one from handling it. So, again, you're probably looking at a mask well under a kilogram for a World War II mask that has all the features you'd want. Only way it could be improved is if it had an oral nasal cup in it. Now, if I remember on this video, I'll show you the insides of all the masks if you can see them clearly. But what you have there is your combined exhale valve around the outside bit, and on the inside bit you've got your voice diaphragm. So let's try and put this on, hopefully I can get it on alright. So there we go, there's the mask on, and hopefully you'll be able to hear that the voice diaphragm is fairly good on this thing. As you can see it pressurises. The rubber's surprisingly comfortable for a mask of its age. However, my lag mark one is made from really thick rubber. This is made from slightly thinner, bendier rubber. Obviously, the lack of oral nasal cup means this fogs up, but again, as the video goes on, you'll see improvements in that sort of design. But overall, this is a very good mask when it was made. You could put anti-dim paste on the inside if you didn't want it to fog up as easily. But you can breathe through it very easily people would be able to understand you. This would fit into a fairly small satchel bag, as you can see the straps are missing from this one, but the bag itself is fairly small and compact. So it's a good piece of equipment that you could carry around with you and it wouldn't weigh too much. So there we go, that is the light anti-gas respirator Mark II. The improvement on this one being that it has a voice diaphragm. This particular one is from the 1950s, however, the mask was definitely in service by 1945 or 1946. Okay, for the 1950s we have the US M9A1, the mask with the comically big nose. So, what's so great about the M9? Well, it actually has an oral nasal cup system in it. So, let's do that so you can see the inside of the mask. So, what this means compared to the other mask is it's got a proper Tissot tube system and an oral nasal cup. So, the Tissot tubes is where, when you breathe in, air is blown onto the lenses. That comes through a comically big nose on the front, so it will go onto each lens. And the oral nasal cup is the black bit in the middle. And what that does, basically, is it means that your nose, you can see the valves in it there, 
So when you breathe out, the air won't flow back up onto the lenses, but when you breathe in, the air will flow onto the lenses, then down to your nose. So it's basically an anti-defogging system. Um, Tissot tubes, to think of it easily, is like when you put the blower in a car on the window to stop it from steaming up. It does the exact same thing, but with your breath in the respirator. And obviously the oral nasal cup is to funnel the warm air out of the mask, not back up. So that's simple design. Again, this is a lightweight mask. Um, there is no voice diaphragm on this mask though, so that is one thing that's not great about it. Several other nations that made copies of these masks, or similar versions to it, did put voice diaphragms here. This just has an exhale valve, uh, so it would be fairly hard to hear somebody talking in it. Uh, this particular one's from 1952, if you can see on the stamp, so you know this is an early 1950s mask. As far as I'm aware, this did originally come out in the 50s, the M9A1. It might have been the original model M9s came out in the very late 40s, I can't remember, but I think the M9A1 for the most part is a 1950s gas mask most people would agree on. Um, so again, as I said, the years of this might not be quite into the decades really well, but that's sort of nitpicking at that point. So the mask has a six point uh, strap system and then it has another sort of strap you clip over it once you put it on. So let's get this on. Okay, so I've got the uh, mask on now, and what I'll just do is do this strap up around the back of the mask to further clip it up. I think that clips onto there. I'm getting it around the right way. And it's quite difficult when you can't see it to actually get it on. I'm sure that is where the plopper's meant to be going on, but there we go. So. These are fairly comfortable. This one isn't the exact right fit for my head and size and everything, but it's close enough as you can see my eyes are mostly centralised. So The only issue of this, like the previous mask, is it has no um, peripheral seal on it. So you have to do it up quite tight to get a good seal. The f my favourite version of this is the Finnish M61 V2. That was actually the first gas mask I ever owned. Simply because the Finnish M61 V2 actually has a um, peripheral seal on it and it's made from an even more comfortable rubber has better quality straps as well so this is basically um, you know like a foreign country made an improved version of it but as you can hopefully see that the M9 is um, for when it came out in the very early 50s maybe even late 40s this is a very very good mask so there you go again it's lightweight it's fairly comfortable for what it is it doesn't fog up as you can see, I've got no paste on the inside here. The oral nasal cup does its job exactly. Yes, the nose is comically big, but it does the job it's meant to do and works well. So, yep, the US M9A1 is an absolutely brilliant mask from the early 1950s. Okay, so we're into the 1960s, and now Britain's made a really good gas mask. This is the Mark VI, or sorry, S6 respirator. And what's the point of this mask? Well, this is really good. So, the S6 is a weird mask, because apparently it was actually developed by Port and Down, and then they just gave the rights to rubber companies to manufacture it, rather than it, uh, you know, being a designed by Avon or, you know, mask like that, where one company manufactures it. So... This is Britain's first 40mm mask, so this is, you know, modern by other standards, there you go, there's a 40mm filter for it. Now, this mask was used from the 60s to the 80s, so this was used for like a 20 year period. So that should speak volumes about how good the design was if it would last 20 years, because bear in mind most nations by this point were changing a mask every decade or less. So something that lasts longer than 20 years, or just about 20 years in service, is a very good mask. Um, this did last even longer with reserve regiments and things like that where like with lots of stuff reserve regiments and things don't get their equipment swapped over as fast so you've got very big eye lenses that give you very good view although they actually um you know cause a bit of fogging there's an oral nasal cup of sorts in this mask although it's kind of molded into the mask if you can see that there um now it's got the really weird feature on this mask that's I've only got one of the masks that has this feature on, which is a modern Sieb Gorman one, modernish Sieb Gorman one, is this weird inflatable bit. Now I've heard this is either to adjust pressure or to um, let the user get a better face seal. It's adjusted by turning that tap and blowing into it. 
As far as I'm aware, it's actually to make a better face seal. The reason being that the Sieb Gorman version, um, or the Sieb Gorman mask from later on, has the exact same thing. It has a pipe on the outside you have to unseal and blow into, then reseal. And that would have no way of adjusting pressure on its own. So I'm pretty certain that would be a face seal. Because I've heard it said both ways in official looking documents, so I really don't know. But my guess is, you know, it's a face seal thing. So you've got your 40mm filter on there. Um, so, you know, you've cut your size down from 60mm. The straps on this still aren't great, but they're much better than the earlier masks. Um, and I'm not really sure if there's actually a proper voice diaphragm on here. Now, I kind of think there is. Uh, I think it kind of uses a similar system to what the S6 uses. So, not the S6, sorry, the uh, light anti-gas respirator Mark II. So I'm pretty sure the voice diaphragm is this bit here, and then where that rubber does that, I'm pretty sure that's the exhale valve. Um, so, anyway, let's put it on. Again, it's going to be pretty muffled because it's a primitive voice diaphragm, but... It's really screwed the straps up and you put it on like that, but there we go. Let's get it comfortable. So, yeah, here we go. The uh, S6 respirator. It's pressurising, so as you can see, it won't fog up because it's got an oral nasal cup of sorts. And yeah, this is a very comfortable for the time it was made mask. Again, this the oral nasal cup of mine sits a bit close to my eye, so that's not so comfortable for me. But it, you know, defogs itself properly. Hopefully you can hear me quite well. Yeah, the air definitely exhales around the side, so that is the voice diaphragm under there. So, you know. The only issue I have with this mask is it's really weird trying to look through the lenses because how they've curved the plastic on them, which I assume is probably acrylic, how they've curved these means that your vision kind of gets cut into two part way around and each thing's at a slightly different angle. So if you wore this for too long you'd get very nauseous where I'm doing this and looking from side to side. This is very trippy and weird. But regardless of that, the S6 obviously went into service in the 1960s and it is very advanced for the time, you know, there's still modern masks that aren't as good as this to give you an idea how good the S6 is. It's fairly comfortable, it's very lightweight for what it is, um, you know, as I said, good field of view even if that field of view makes you feel a bit nauseous. It has a voice diaphragm on, of sorts at least so people can hear you um, and it took 40mm filters. so. For when this came out in the 1960s, this was the cutting edge, really, of respirator design. Okay, now we jump to the Soviet Union in the 1970s of the SHMS. So what is this mask? Well, it's basically a mask designed for snipers or people who have to use optics. Now, the regular Soviet masks at the time were called the SHM-41. And that looks very similar to GP-5. I've done lots of videos on it on all the GP-5. It looks like an SHM-41. Um, but this, uh, the SHMS was basically the specialised version of it, intended for optics. But the advantage it had over that mask is it has a voice diaphragm on it under this cover, and more importantly it's got the flat optical front bits. It's also got Tissot tubes running up to each eye here and here. So you probably won't see much from the inside of this because it's a Soviet hood mask, but as you can probably see, it looks like that. So you have your 40mm GOST filter intake there and your exhale valve there. The same assembly they use on all these masks basically. You've got your voice diaphragm there and eyepieces there. Um, you've also on this mask got specialist ear things, I think that's so you can hear slightly better with it on. Now I'm not going to attach the filter to it because as I said the filters these masks use are probably not safe. Some are uh, confirmed to not be safe containing asbestos, others are highly unlikely to be safe. So what will happen is you'll hear me going grrr, 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 with it on, well not me, the mask because when this isn't connected to the proper filter assembly I guess too much air can move through the mask and it makes the voice diaphragm sound really vibrate um, an interesting note about these masks as well just for those who are curious is this mask, the PMG and PBF are all the masks used in Half-Life 2 as a sort of concept art or influence behind the Metro Cops and Combine Soldiers uh, the PMG is technically the one valve used in the concept art, but in some ways I think this looks closer to the Metrocop mask than the PMG actually ends up looking. Um, 
So I'll put on, on without the filter. You could either wear a small filter directly on the mask, but the main way of wearing it would have been a canister filter in the satchel here with a hose and um, you know going up to the mask. So this one's from 1978, but it was the early 1970s these went into production as far as I can find out online. So let's put the mask on. Okay, so as you can see, I'm looking directly through the eyepieces. Now, the problem of a design like this is it means that basically I've got, um, I can see far less horizontally, especially when we get down to this area. However, the very good news is this works perfectly with scopes, iron sights, and binoculars, which is basically what its job was. So, if you're ever trying to look down a rifle scope, you can do it really well with this mask, because you can cushion the rifle scope against here, and get sort of a perfect view through the rifle scope. I even found with some scopes, weirdly enough, that looking through them with one eye closed with this mask on gives you a better scope picture than looking through the mask of, uh, looking through a scope without a mask on. Simply because all you can see is the scope, there's no light coming in from the sides if a scope's pressed against this eyepiece. So, there you go. So, the voice diaphragm, as you can hear, it's a bit grumbly, and I said part of that's because there's not a filter on the mask. So I think there's more air moving through it than normal. However, the SHMS is a brilliant design, especially from the early 70s when the Soviets put it into production. Um, you've got this kind of rigid bit on here as well, which is really nice, compared to most of the Soviet masks at the time, which were just, you know, completely soft latex. This has the Tissot tubes down both the sides, so the eyes defog. Uh, you've got your sort of nose bit here, but as you can see, this front section is much firmer latex than the sides, which is softer latex. But that means the mask always keeps its shape properly, which is, you know, a good design, but it also still folds up small to go into a satchel bag. So, this is a brilliant mask. I still don't think there's been an optical mask to come along to actually be better than this. But, for the 1970s, the Soviet SHMS is definitely the most interesting and probably cool design that's around. For total practicality, I don't know if I prefer this or an S6, but... This mask kind of does everything I want from a mask, and, um, you know, for the most part, it's a really good design. Now, no surprise to anyone that the mask that's coming up next, this is the S10 respirator and its lovely DPM satchel. So, the S10 was a mask developed by Avon Rubber in the 1980s for use by the British Army, and it's amazing. Now, I've got the outserts on this one, um, so this was compatible with outserts as well. They literally just clip onto the outside. They're not fiddly to put on at all. You just clip them on and off. So... The S10 was basically the idea of having a truly modern, lightweight mask at the time. Now, you could also connect a radio to this mask and a flash hood. There's the flash hood to stop the mask setting on fire, if you're like setting off flashbangs and things or breaching charges near the mask. And here's the radio that would clip onto the side and then clip into an actual radio, well, microphone, I should say. So, the filter I've got in here is not the authentic S10 filter that's in another satchel bag somewhere else. But, here's the S10, so... I'll get the filter on it and I'll show you the inside. So what feature does this mask have? So let's show you from the inside. So you've got your exhale valve down the bottom there, which also doubles as a voice diaphragm uh, due to its design, which I'll show you the cover off in a moment. You've got a drinking tube in there. Now if I manipulate the lever, you'll see the drinking tube swings out and swings back in. It's not the best drinking tube system in the world, but it does work. Let me just put that back up. As you can see, you've got an oral nasal cup in there, and you've got your lenses. So, if I just take one of these off to show you, uh, so obviously you can have it looking like a regular mask if you wanted it like that. And obviously you can see that when you look out of it like that, it looks normal. You'll see that it's actually a weird design. It's not actually completely round. It's like flat there, and then sort of glazed there. The reason being, it means you get a better field of view, but being flat, like the SHMS, means that you can look through scopes more easily of the mask. So, I'll get that clip back on. Obviously, when the outsets are put on, you're not able to do that anymore, but the outsets look cool, and that's why I've got them on there. For those of you that keep asking what the outsets are for, I've said this several times, but I'm pretty sure they're cherry red for the reason that they're either for laser designation, where you can then see a certain laser with these on that you wouldn't see otherwise, or they protect you from burning your retinas out of a laser, or they're for just better night vision without actually using night vision goggles, simply because seeing everything in red keeps the eye pupil open more than it would regularly. Um, so you've got your 14mm filter connection um, under this cover here, if I take it off. 
sometimes it can come on quite tight. There you go, you've got your voice trumpet system. So basically how that works is this is designed to actually amplify speech that's exhaled. Uh, obviously you've got your drinking tube connected there. Let's get this bit back on. There you go, it snaps back on. Uh, you've got your drinking tube that comes out of here that you connect your canteen. Uh, lid there. Not the best system, but it's alright. As I said, I'm not a fan of drinking tubes anyway, so I'm not the best person to review drinking tubes because I hate most of them. Um, and then on this side, you've got the bit that's your secondary voice diaphragm or where you can connect your radio to so people can hear you very clearly. So, the straps are rubber on this. Uh, they're not quick to adjust. You basically unflick these bits and then can pull the strap through slowly to either tighten it or loosen it. But it's good in the sense that when you've got it how you want it, you can set the straps. Now the straps are slightly elasticy rubber, so the idea is that you have it slightly tighter than you'd actually want, then you can just put the mask on quickly. So I found the best method for putting this mask on, to be honest, is just doing that with the straps around the back of your head and pulling it down. Okay, so let's look at the S10 with it on. So for a mask from the 1980s, the S10 is very advanced. As said, you've got your drinking tube on it. It's 40mm filter like the S6 was. You've got a proper voice diaphragm there that a radio can clip onto with a microphone and your sort of exhale valve combined voice diaphragm. It can take out certs. It's made from a really strong butyl rubber, so it's not likely to get damaged by chemicals as easily as some of the masks. Other than the drinking tube being a bit annoying like most masks um, with drinking tubes on, although it obviously serves a purpose. It's overall very comfortable and good. Um, as I said, the strap system isn't too bad actually. For rubber straps, these don't bother me too much. The successor to the S10, the FM12, has a better strap system. But um, overall, this is still excellent. So, you know, big points for the S10. I think you have to kind of look at these masks in context of what was around at the time to realise just how good the S10 was when it came out. Since the S10 came out, lots of companies have made S10-like masks as well, which should speak volumes, you know, imitation being the sincerest form of flattery. Um, if companies want to make masks like the S10, and you made the S10, you know, you've done something right. So, this went into service with Britain in the 80s, I think sort of early 80s, when the S6 was officially removed from service. Although, as said, it took many years for all the S10s to replace the S6s. And then, um... By sort of late 2000s, this was replaced with the Scott GSR, which is a hideous mask. But the S10 is brilliant. It's, you know, I can't fault this mask. But you can improve upon it, and we'll see that soon. But there we go. This is the S10 from the 80s. An excellent mask. Now for the 1990s, we're jumping to Sweden. Because Sweden basically obviously looked at the S10, really liked it, and decided they needed a mask like the S10. So this is called, and I'm going to horribly butcher this, something like the Skeed Mask 90 um, in Sweden. And it basically, I think Swedes were telling me, means like Protective Mask 90 series, so 1990s, pretty self-obvious. Um, now, this unfortunately, I've only got the civilian version that they made of it. I think the company that makes these is called Forshade or Forshida or something like that. Um, again, I can't pronounce it properly. Swedes have told me how I meant to pronounce it, but I'm never going to manage it because I don't actually speak Swedish properly. Obviously, I don't speak Swedish at all. Um, so, yeah, it's not made by IKEA for the people who keep asking that. So, the military version of this, uh, like an S10, had a drinking tube on it here where the sort of exhale valve is. The only thing with these masks is they don't have a proper voice diaphragm, apparently. I think it's a similar system to the S10 where there's um, an exhale valve here and then sort of a um, you know system to try and amplify that so not a proper voice diaphragm so bear that in mind as you can see it looks very similar to the S10's thing with the cap on it there um, better field of view than the S10 I assume this is maybe made from polycarbonate rather than actual um, plastic but don't shoot it and find out and find your break the mask but the military version had a drinking tube here and you could put a filter on either side of it with a blanking plug and again you could probably uh, go back, buy um, a CT12's kind of blanking plug which acts as a voice diaphragm as well, put that on the other side you're not using and then have it set up exactly like an S10. So what advantages does this have over S10? Better field of view is the main thing really. Uh, slightly better rubber as well than S10, uh, very very comfortable. Um, has a better head harness as well as you can probably see it's a really good mesh. So from the inside that looks like that. Again, from the inside, this is very similar to an S10. There's not much difference. Um, you can obviously see that you've got your oral nasal cup there. 
So, um, and it looks like you've got a Tissot tube system that goes under each eye as well, for the most part. You've definitely got a bit there. It might just be the reflective type thing where, you know, the air comes in. It's a system designed to evenly spread the air out onto both things, even if it's just coming in from one side. So anyway, um, let's put this mask on and you can see me wearing it. I'll pull it down, actually, because these masks always go down in the throat if I'm going up. So let's tighten it. Now, of all the masks I own, this one makes the most comfortable seal to my face. It's literally perfect. It suction cups on. So, well done to the Swedes for designing such a good system. Okay, so here we go. This is the mask on. So, yeah, it's lightweight. Uh, you get a very, very good field of view of this mask. Um, you know, I get a better field of view of this mask than some of the panoramic masks I've got. It's just you get a bit of ghosting in the middle, obviously, where the uh, section is there. Um, this bit's a bit big around my nose, for me in particular they could probably have cut this nose bit down, but for some people with bigger noses obviously they'd want that system. Um, so yeah, overall this is very comfortable and very effective. Um, and as I said, the military version of it, which was called something like the Skeed Mask 90, um, is the better version really, but I've only got this version. Now, the Forshida F2 is the military version, the F2A4 is this version, as far as I'm aware. Um, but overall, yes, this is amazing. It's kind of like all the good features of the S10 and then they've improved upon it. I said, especially if you have the military version, which has more features on it. Not much else to say about this, but as I said, I really love this because, let me demonstrate this. If I take all the straps, uh, make the straps completely loose. Uh, it's probably actually going to fail now, but... Yeah, for the most part, this kind of sticks to my face now. Notice even with the straps off, it makes an airtight seal. Now, I wouldn't want to use this without the straps tightened, but, you know, I think that speaks volume about how good the mask seals to my face. Now, I think part of that is just how good the chin section is on here. It goes in quite deep, and then it goes up, which I think is what helps your face kind of weld to the inside of the mask when you have it on. But, yeah, this is an absolutely amazing mask, easily and probably the top three masks I'd pick if I actually had to pick one of my masks to use and funnily enough I have the respirator bag for this mask set up with brand new filters ready to go because it's definitely one mask I'd either use or give to a family member in an emergency because of just how good this mask is. So the last mask for the video, the mask of the 2000s, um, this is the Avon FM12. Now I prefer the CT12 variant but I'll talk about the base model. So the FM12 was sort of Avon's idea of improving the S10 further. Now I'm going to check something while I've got this out because I got asked this in the comment the other day. Um, it does the radio for the S10 clip onto here, I'm pretty certain it's going to, but I'm going to check that for you. Um, so the FM12 is basically Avon's version of improving the S10 and making it into a new mask. Um, the primary differences between this and the S10 is it sits closer to the face, so um, it's reduced in size and weight. Um, it still takes 40mm filter. Later models of the FM12, you could put the filter on either side of a blanking plug. This one's set up like the S10, where the you'd order it in the side. You wanted the filter on, you order obviously order the filter on the side you don't shoot from. Um, so if you're right-handed, you have the filter on the left side of the mask. Uh, so on the right side would be the side you clip the radio onto. Um, with obviously later models, what they did was they set up with a blanking plug, so you can change it around yourself or have two filters on it. So. You've got your drinking tube here, it's levers in a different place. Um, you've got a strap system much more like the Forshida one, which is a lot more comfortable, even though the S10's one wasn't bad. And again, it's just like an improved S10 on the inside. So without further ado, let me put this on. Um, the straps are kind of interesting as well, because they're designed so um, you have the quick tighten bottom straps, uh, because obviously they're the ones you have to loosen and tighten the most, and the rest of them you can kind of clip into place. So, let's get this on and pulled down. So now this is on to my face, what I do is obviously pull these straps tight. So as you can see that pressurises. And I could adjust the drinking tube into my face by doing that. Now again, it's not a perfect drinking tube system, because um, it's still one that swivels in from the side which doesn't work very well. The drinking tubes that come from the front of the mask forwards are the better design because they line up with your mouth properly and don't get in the way. But as you can see, oral nasal cup stops the mask fogging up. I've still got a very good field of view of this because here's the thing with respirators like the optical masks. You can have a smaller um, 
sort of lens, but if that lenses are smaller but they sit closer to your eyes, then you still get an equal field of view. Or, you know, you could have a lens that's 20% smaller, but if it sits, you know, 40% closer to your eye, you can have a better field of view, for example, <clears throat> you know, for that reason like that. So again, this is a very comfortable mask. I don't think it's quite as comfortable as the Fushida one, but for the most part, you know, they're, they're almost the same. Um, I'd happily wear either of these masks for very long periods. You know, this is lightweight, um, comfortable, everything makes sense where it's laid out on the mask, really. So, you know, lots and lots of factors that are very good about it. So, now to answer the question I had the other day, let's see if I can clip the radio onto the side of it. Now, the S10 outsets don't fit it because obviously the lenses are smaller, but the radio microphone bit, let's see. It may actually not. Uh, that would surprise me if it didn't. Let's just take the mask off and try it with the mask off, just in case that's a factor. No, tell a lie, it just needed a bit of pressure inside the mask there to hold it firm. So you, so you can see that clips on and swivels around, so you can have it set up with your radio microphone on there, so people can hear you very clearly. Underneath this cap, I'm not going to try and pull it off right now, it's the exact same as an S10 kind of voice trumpet system, just obviously made a bit smaller, because this mask's like an S10 downsized and made to a better standard. Uh, the CT12 variant, which I was saying I really like, uh, if you've watched my videos a lot, you'll know the difference. The CT12 version has basically just removed the drinking tube and sealed up the drinking tube system. So, it basically just further reduces the weight of the mask. That's the only difference on it. Obviously, my CT12, I can switch the filters to either side. This FM12, I can't, but later FM12s, you could. Um, so, yeah, for the 2000s, this is my favourite mask of the 2000s, because it's just basically a better version of the S10. So, there you go. That's the uh, Avon FM12, and as I said, I prefer the CT12 variant, but most people prefer the drinking tubes, I just personally don't. Um, I don't have any masks that are newer than 20, uh, 2010, I particularly like the design, although I only have a couple of Chinese masks, I think, that are newer than that. I also um, have the GSR, although that was late 2000s, that was developed, not even 2010, I hate that mask, so there you go. But hopefully you found this interesting how over the decades mask design has improved.